Hi folks and welcome back. I'm out in the woods today in this beautiful woodland. Um, I'm staying overnight and I've just got a very basic kit with me, just bare essentials. Um, it's something I've wanted to do for a while. Um, you know, there's, there's something quite nice about just going out with very minimal kit and seeing how you get on. <laughs> but there is another reason for, um, for doing this and I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about that later on. Um, I found a nice spot um, where there's a natural uh, crook, a natural V in a tree. Um, and I've, I've put a pole across and propped it at the other end with a, another veed uh, branch that I found. Um, it, it's dead, but it seems strong enough. I'm going to use that pole to support my shelter, which I'll build in a bit. But first I need to, I need to make a bed. I need to build a bed to get me up off the, off the damp ground. The ground in this, in this forest is, is really, really damp. Um, you know, we're in the middle of November. I need to get myself up off the ground because I haven't bought... Um, any bedding with me. I haven't got a sleeping bag. I haven't got anything like that. So I'm, I'm going to be relying heavily on, on my bed and getting up off the ground. But before I get on with that, I thought I'd go, go through the kit that I brought with me, um, show you what I've got uh, to work with. Um, whatever I haven't got, I'm going to need to, you know, find or, or make from what I can find here in the, in the woods. First off, clothing, because this is my main defense against the cold. I've got a merino wool um, base layer here. And then on top of that, I've got a woolen jumper. Uh, this has got a, a terry knit uh, kind of weave on the inside, so it traps a bit more air. Should keep me a bit warmer. And I've got my woolen bush shirt, which I made from a, um, a blanket years ago. You've probably seen this in, in previous videos. So that's what I've got on my top half. That is my that is that is my insulation. That's it. Uh, I've got a woolly hat. I've got a pair of trousers. I've got some woolen socks, and I've got my high top combat boots. I've got a pair of leather work gloves for building my shelter, for collecting materials, cutting, things like that, and for working around the fire. Everything else I brought with me is contained in this water bottle pouch and in the pockets of my trousers. So in this pouch, I've got a lightweight poncho. Um, this thing packs up really small. As you can see, it fits in that tiny little um, pouch at the front there. And this is obviously my wet weather gear, um, but it's also going to be my shelter. You know, the nice thing about a poncho is when you when you unpop the sides, it it's a sheet, you know, with a, with a hole in it for your head. Um, so you can use that to make a, a makeshift um, shelter. And that's what I'm gonna do. And then in the main compartment, I've got one liter of water and a metal cup for boiling water and cooking in. I've got a torch. And here I've got a first aid kit with just a few basic first aid supplies. In this pocket, I've got the only food I've brought with me. I've got 200 grams of biltong, which is a dried beef, a bit like jerky. And uh, that needs to do my, my dinner this evening and breakfast in the morning. That is the only food I've brought with me. Everything else I'm gonna have to um, forage from, from in the woodland here. And then finally, I've got a Swiss army knife. This is the only cutting tool I've brought with me. So this has to do everything. Um, there are a couple of normal knife blades on here, a, lo a long one and a short one. And there is a saw blade, although the blade is only as long as the knife. <laughs> um, and then there are a couple of other blades which aren't gonna be much use, like a can opener and a bottle opener and things. I have got a bit of a secret weapon incorporated into this Swiss army knife. And that is a small amount of tinder, which stows here on the uh, corkscrew. It's a synthetic uh, tinder and um, you just cut a bit off, fluff it up with your knife and um, it'll take a spark. And it just lives on there out of the way. I've also got a ferro rod and the ferro rod takes the place of the uh, toothpick on a Swiss army knife. It just goes in there and uh, that'll obviously generate a spark when you strike your blade along it. So I've got a means to light my fire, which is great. I was very kindly gifted this knife by a subscriber, um, along with the, the tinder and the, and the ferro rods that go in it. So I'm, I'm really excited to, to use it on this camp. I've wanted to do a, a Swiss army knife overnight for, for ages. Um, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be great to, to have a knife which has the fire starting capabilities as well. Um, I need to get cracking. I need to get my, my bed built. I need to collect firewood. I need to, um, you know, have a little look around and find some bits to go in my, uh, my stew, <laughs> my biltong stew that I'm going to make later. Um, so I've got a lot to do. So I'm, I'm going to get cracking. 
um, get this bed built first, I think, because once that's done, then I can put the shelter over the top, although it's only, you know, stretching out, stretching out the, the poncho as a tarp. Well, it might not look like much, <laughs> uh, but it's surprisingly, surprisingly comfortable. Um, 
I've selected thin hazel poles for the for the springs if you like um, so there is you know a bit more a bit more give um, it's well up off the ground it's two two poles thick plus the plus the the kind of you know the cross logs to hold it up off the ground so it's, it's well up off the ground um, and then I've put uh, loads of the greenery from the tops of the tops of the hazel as a mattress and it's quite springy and it's it's quite comfortable I need to put a little bit more around where my head is to act as a pillow but I'm pretty happy with it it should be comfortable enough for tonight for sure um, next uh, priority really is getting getting my firewood um, while I've still got some light like time is time is pushing on I've probably only got a little less than an hour of, uh, of light left really so I just want to get a load of firewood here I'm not going to um, cut it up you know I've only got that little Swiss army knife that was all right for the hazel poles just about um, but there's no way I'm going to be cutting through big big bits of wood so I'm just going to drag pieces over and um, I will just uh, I'll put them on in their full length and just drag them you know as they burn out I'll drag them in um, and keep it going that way and hopefully I'll be able to get a reasonably long fire um, to keep me warm through the night. There's loads around, loads of dead standing, branches caught up in trees, whole trees that have fallen down and are, and are off the ground. So I'll, I'll just gather what I can, get a lot of uh, smaller pieces and kindling and um, get, get, a fire, get a fire going. Well, I've gathered a whole heap of firewood. Um, whether it'll be enough to get me through the night, I don't know, but it won't be far off, I don't think. <laughs> There's some big bits there, including one whopping great big uh, oak branch. Um, it's a little bit punky on the outside, but I think it's good inside, so uh, that should burn nice and slow. Um, if I need more, there's there's plenty of wood around. Uh, you know, not very far if I need to get up in the night and, and get more, I haven't got very far to go. Um, I've also got a load of uh, thin uh, kindling and some and some smaller pieces. So yeah, all is good. I'm absolutely knackered. Um, I, I didn't have any lunch today. I had a, a kind of late breakfast <laughs> and then skipped lunch. Not intentionally. I just forgot. And um, you know, now I'm out here and I've only got what I've got. So um, yeah, it is what it is. I'm also thirsty. I've had a, a small drink of water, but um, I only brought that liter. So um, I'm trying to uh, conserve that. I obviously need it for cooking, and I want a drink um, in the morning for sure. Um, so I'm just trying to, you know, eke it out. Oh no, <laughs> I've just broken my ferro rod. Oh, okay, I've got a really short ferro rod now. Okay, it's obviously no, no substitute for a, a big ferro rod by any stretch, but... Oh, come on, can't even get it to spark. Maybe I should use a different... Okay, I'm going to use the, the back of the saw this time. Um, the uh, problem with the blades on a Swiss Army knife is the backs are a bit rounded and you really need a nice 90 degree sharp edge um, to, uh, you know, to generate those sparks. Um, so I'm going to try with the back of the saw which just seems a little bit coarser. Oh yes, there we go.
well I had mixed success on my foraging excursion <laughs> uh, I got some nettles I got some chickweed which I found uh, by the side of the field that joins onto this um, this woodland and I found a few uh, late blackberries which was a surprise I wasn't expecting to find any but there were there were a few not many I got half a dozen um, but that'll certainly add a nice little sweetness to the to the kind of stew sauce liquid broth um, and uh, yeah that'll definitely definitely help with the flavor um, I did find some burdock uh, it was well gone I dug down as far as I could the ground is rock hard I dug as best as I could but when I then kind of went in to investigate the root, it had completely rotted away. There was nothing there. The, the plant had, um, yeah, it was dead. Um, whether there is a, a root deeper down, I don't know, but um, I certainly couldn't get to it. I've got uh, plenty of that, um, that biltong. Uh, you know, I can put in half of that. That's, that's 100 grams, and that will um, obviously rehydrate and, and, and swell up a little bit, hopefully, and, and um, make, my, make my stew substantial enough for my dinner. Mm. Oh, that is delicious. Mm. The um the flavor of the biltong has obviously gone into the the stew and made a really tasty gravy. Yeah, this there's saltiness, there's pepper, all the things that make a stew nice. <laughs> there's a sweetness as well from those blackberries. I know there are only a few, but yeah, you can definitely get a little bit of sweetness from them. That's really, really nice. Mm.
dinner was really good. Hit the spot. I was uh, flagging a bit before dinner, but that has sorted me right out. Um, there's another reason for me being out here this weekend, uh, aside from the fact that I wanted to do it anyway. Um, there's a guy called Neil Andrews over at Greencraft. He's got a YouTube channel and um, he, he sells various bits on, on Etsy that he makes. And uh, he's a, a bushcraft instructor, really nice guy. Um, he's trying to raise money for, um, for cancer research. Um, he lost his mum last year. And uh, obviously that's devastating, isn't it? And he just wants to do something to, uh, to help a little bit. Um, you know, cancer is one of those things, isn't it? It's indiscriminate. Um, we, all, we all know people who've been affected either directly or indirectly um, from, from cancer. I certainly have. We've had, um, you know, friends and, and, and family who've, um, who've been affected by it, you know, and it's, it's, it's just horrible. So at the beginning of December, Neil wants to organise a, a sort of camp out <laughs> wherever you are um, you know try and get out the weekend of the 4th and the 5th of December and do a camp um, you know it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be a full-on bushcraft camp it could be whatever you want it to be really but the idea is that um, you know do it but then donate a little bit of money to to cancer to cancer research um, Neil's got a, a just giving page and I'll put a link down below to that um, so just um, yeah, if you can spare some money, make a donation, and uh, and then go out and go out and have fun that weekend. Um, if there's anybody who uh, organises these sort of things, or is a is an instructor, or does um, group bushcraft activities, are there any uh, you know clubs or groups out there, um, and you want to do something, get something organised, that would be even better, um, you know, and perhaps. Um, you could charge a small fee for for people coming along and, and taking part and uh and that could perhaps go go towards the donation that would be that would be awesome craig at uh, black wolf survival down in kent i know he's he's organizing a weekend and um there's going to be all sorts of things going on um in memory of mors kahansky because because that's the kind of the second thing really um mors was i mean he was one of the bushcraft greats um he knew he knew everything he was a teacher he, he wrote books he was a, an absolute expert in the art of bushcraft um, in particular uh, you know the craft of surviving in the northern forests um, and he died from a type of cancer uh, at his home in Canada on the 5th of December and that's why um, that's why Neil wants to organize it for that weekend because it's it's kind of to celebrate his life as well um, and the nice thing about that is that it kind of lends itself to a theme for your for your weekend and that's why i'm doing this i'm doing it super minimal um because that's what that's what moore's taught you know to 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 try and live off the land and, and use as much um that you can find around you rather than taking stuff with you my very crude raised bed and shelter is uh, very much inspired by moore's yeah this is my this is my nod to the man yeah so if, if you can get out that weekend weekend of the 4th 5th of December that would be fantastic pop along to Neil's just giving page leave a donation and that would be that would be awesome I'm looking forward to trying out this bed hopefully my my shelter will be all right there is a uh, forecast for, for rain overnight and, and again tomorrow. Um, my bed is slightly further out than the edge of the shelter. Um, so if the rain is persistent, um, the edge of my bed will, will get a little bit wet, I'm sure. Although, you know, I'm in the woodland. I've got the, the tree canopy above me. That will, that will certainly help. And I can always hunker to the back of the bed um, to keep out of the, keep out of the rain.
morning folks. I, uh, <laughs> I'd like to say I slept really well, but um, I was up every, every hour really, um, tending to this fire. The, uh, the wood was burning through really quickly. Um, I had that oak log, which is still going now actually. That, that was, uh, you know, that's a nice slow burner, but um, all, the other, all the other logs um, just burnt really quickly. So um, yeah, about every hour I was um, waking up uh, a bit chilly um, and then having to drag, drag the logs back in. I guess you just sense that drop in temperature and it's, it's like a, you know, it's a wake up call. So, you know, the fire didn't ever go out. It just sort of dwindled down to embers and I was able to drag logs across and, um, and get it, get it going again. And it was nice and warm and then I got another hour of sleep. <laughs> so, um, I have slept, you know, I've had lots of hour long stints of sleep, but, um, lots of, uh, lots of waking up as well. The bed was pretty comfortable. Um, the, the hazel, um, leaves and sort of top thin twiggy branches compressed down through the night. Um, so, you know, by the time it got to this morning, I could feel those poles underneath. Didn't need more on there. I knew that. I knew it wasn't really thick enough, but um, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. If I was staying here longer, I would, um, I would improve the bed for sure. That would be um, top priority. But uh, yeah, other than that, very comfortable. Um, there was a bit of rain during the night, a couple of, a couple of showers. Um, it didn't really amount to much, didn't last too long and um, the, 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 the wetness didn't get to me. You know, I was dry, my, my bed remained dry. It didn't really get through the canopy. It wasn't, wasn't that heavy, um, so that was fine. I've um, just gone and picked some more nettles um, and I'm using the last 150 milliliters of water that I had left in my bottle just to make, make some tea. Um, you know, Englishman's got to have his tea. <laughs> um, I am thirsty. Um, yeah, and uh, a nice cup of tea and some and some breakfast sounds good to me. Big shout out to to these guys, uh, Bossets Biltong. Um, absolutely delicious, really nice, just on its own. But as I found out last night, superb in a stew, makes its own gravy, makes its own sauce. Fantastic. Yeah, Bossets Biltong made the South African way. Very nice. Well, I'm going to get things cleared away here. Take this, take this bed apart, um, take my shelter down, and uh, put things back to how they were when I arrived. Um, I'm actually out here all day. I'm, I'm filming another video today, so um, I've got time to uh, to keep an eye on this on this fire. I'm gonna I'm gonna let it go out naturally by itself, and um, and I can just keep coming back in and checking on it. Um, I have got some water in my Land Rover. And um, I can bring that up later on and, and um, just extinguish what's left, basically, and cover it all up and everything. Yeah, it's been a it's been a, a really nice camp. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. The bed, I think, was a complete success. Um, you know, I didn't feel any of that cold from the ground being being high up, and the, and the fire um, just allowed warm air to um, kind of circulate underneath the bed uh, and kept me warm. Um, you know, from the side and from underneath, and then the the shelter leaning the way. It, the way it did um, reflected some of that that heat to me as well. So don't forget if you can um, do anything on that weekend of the fourth and fifth, that would be amazing. And um, go check out the the Just Giving page. I'll put a link below. I'll also put a link to to Neil's um, YouTube channel. Um, if you want some inspiration, go go and have a look at some of his videos because he's you know he's a, a big champion of uh, Moskohansky, and um, he's got loads of videos um, demonstrating some of his some of his sort of techniques, the super shelter and, and all sorts of things. So yeah, go, go and check them out. Yeah, I need to get everything packed away so that I can make a start on filming this next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.